This is the last video for the section on um, conservative vector fields. And this video covers the differential form of line integrals. If capital F equals m of xyzi plus n of xyzj plus p of xyzk, and r of t equals x of ti plus y of tj plus z of t k, then the line integral over curve C of f dot dr can be written as the line integral over curve C of m dx plus n dy plus p dz. So this is called the differential form of the line integral. And this is just in general. It doesn't have to be a conservative field in order to write your line integral in this form. However, if capital F is a gradient field, so conservative, then we say that m dx plus n dy plus p dz is exact, and then we can apply the fundamental theorem for line integrals to evaluate the integral. So our practice problem says, although it is not defined on all of space R3, the field associated with the line integral below is simply connected, and the component test can be used sh to show it is conservative. Find a potential function for the field and evaluate the line integral. So we have the line integral from 1 to 1, to the point 2, 1, 1 of 2x natural log of y minus yz all times d of x plus x squared over y minus xz times d of y minus xz dz. So the function attached to dx 2x natural log of y minus yz is our m. The function attached to y, x squared over y minus xz is our n. And the function attached to dz, negative xy, is our p. So what we need to do first is find the potential function following the same procedure that we did in our last video. So partial f partial x equals m, which is 2x natural log of y minus yz. And so to try to find my potential function f, I'm going to take the antiderivative of 2x natural log of y minus yz with respect to x. So I'm going to do the um, integral of 2x natural log of y minus yz dx. So that is x squared natural log of y minus xyz plus some function of y and z. So we'll call this g of yz. Because if I took the derivative of that with respect to x, I'd get 0. Now the partial f partial y equals n which is x squared over y minus xz. So I'm going to take the partial derivative of the function that I found in my last step. So partial partial y of x squared natural log of y minus xyz plus g of yz. And that gives me x squared times 1 over y. The derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y. So x squared times 1 over y minus xz plus partial g partial y. Now notice the x squared over y minus xz is exactly what I want the partial derivative of my potential function with respect y to be. And so that means that partial g partial y is 0, which we discussed in the last video means that g is just a function of z at the most. So we have partial f partial z equals negative xy. 
and partial partial z of the function we found in our last step, x squared natural log of y minus xyz plus h of z equals negative xy plus partial h partial z. Now negative xy is exactly what I want the partial derivative with respect to z to be, and so partial h partial z must be zero. So that tells us that h of z is a constant function. So our potential function is lowercase f of x, y, z equals x squared natural log of y minus x, y, z plus c. Now remember, you can double check this by taking the partial derivatives and making sure that that matches up with your initial m, n, and p. So based on this, and by the fundamental theorem for line integrals, the line integral from 1, 2, 1 to 2, 1, 1 of 2x natural log of y minus yz dx plus x squared over y minus xz dy minus xy dz is equal to my potential function, lowercase f, with the 2, 1, 1 plugged in, minus the potential function with 1, 2, 1 plugged in. So plug in your upper bound, plug in your lower bound, and subtract. So that's going to be, with the upper bound, 2, 1, 1 plugged in, I'll get 2 squared natural log of 1 minus 2 times 1 times 1 minus my lower bound, 1 squared natural log of 2 minus 1 times 2 times 1 which is negative 2 minus natural log of 2 plus 2. So simplify that and we get a negative natural log of 2 as our um, result. So if you're presented with an integral and you know that um, it's exact, then find the potential function and um, then use the fundamental theorem.